government commence moves to make Odisha a growing and progressive city. Stakeholders calls for collaboration to tackle challenges facing education sector. Local airlines to shut down operations over aviation fuel. UN Security Council calls for a peaceful solution on Ukraine invasion. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukwuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround the maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast News on ABS Television. My name is Priska Ongo. The governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukwuma Saludo, has commenced the move of reviving the city of Onicha with his first meeting with Onicha landlords. The governor had a meeting with Onicha Landlord Center and the modalities to make Onicha once a growing and progressive city. Government House Correspondent Valentine Badoha found this report taken from her. The discussion was to review the activities within the metropolitan commercial city of Onicha and what should be done to make it a smart mega city. According to Governor Saludo, the first assignment is to resurrect Onitsha and return the one-time biggest commercial city in West Africa to its premier state. Governor Saludo regretted that Anambra State is losing potential investments as the plan of the city has completely been neglected to add that landlords have a critical role to play in the Anambra project. Discussing the role of the landlords in rebuilding Onitsha, Governor Saluda decried the attitude of landlords in erecting of buildings indiscriminately. He also pointed out the ugly experiences people go through trying to shop in Onitsha and reiterated his commitment to revitalizing the system, saying that Onitsha is key to the development and progress of Anambra and Southeast at large, and assured that the mission is not only to resurrect Onitsha, but to make it livable and shopping a pleasurable experience. The governor, who assured that the master plan of furniture must return and be put to use, reminded those that built on waterways to remove them, maintaining that any building that is not in its proper place, especially those that contribute to flooding, must be removed. Governor Saludo noted that for Anambra to become livable, law and order must return and urged the landlords to cooperate with the government in the implementation of Anisha Master Plan, which will also solve the traffic challenges Anisha residents face daily. He said that landlords will benefit most from the transformation underway as the value of assets in Anambra will increase once the state is planned, clean and green, but noted that the government will partner with landlords to achieve its agenda. <laughs> We have a program for training and retraining and empowerment of our youth. We're going to turn an Anambra to be the digital tribe. Train tens of thousands of our people, giving them the digital tribe. We are coming. Because our mind travel, everything technology and technology everywhere. The Anambra State Deputy Governor, Dr. Nyekachuku Ibezim, the Secretary to the State Government, Professor Solochuku Lobel, House Members, Chief of Staff to the Governor, Mr. Ernest Ezaji, Asatu National President, Barista Titus Abudo, and other members of the Executive were present at the meeting. The Vice Chancellor of Nambe, Azikiwe University, Oka Professor Charles Simone, has called for collaboration to address the challenges facing the Nigerian university system. He made a call in his keynote speech at the 27th Biennial National Convention of the University of Nigeria Alumni Association in Oka. Joseph Ibocha filed in this report. The event which team Alumni Association as a global phenomenon in university education, Nigeria Universities in Focus, coincided with the 180th edition of National Executive Council meeting of the association had in attendance eminent personalities and scholars from various parts of the country. Professor Isimone, who appreciated Alumni Associations that are filling some funding gaps in the university system, recommended that such interventions should be continuous in order to meet expectations, noting that interventions from university proprietors are rarely enough. You know that the duty of being a leader should not stop when you step outside. Uh, in fact, the work begins when you finish your own tenure because you have to keep on directing for things to go well. So that's why when I see these elders who have served very well, 
and they are still serving, they are still coming back to serve. I think I appreciate that. The younger person should also emulate this. So I recognize all our branch presidents, former ones, secretary, all ex who one way or the other have been serving before and those who are currently serving. I recognize all of you. Contributing, the National President of the University of Nigeria Alumni Association, Saben Okoronkwong, noted that within about 57 years of existence of the association, a good number of alumni members have brought interventions for the university, but called for collective efforts in achieving more, including getting a befitting multi-purpose alumni complex for their alma mater. Lions and lionesses, as an association, we have continued to do more and properly align with the mission as well as the vision of the Founding Fathers. We will follow the dictates of the wardens of the alma mater pledge to the letter. This will ensure the association retains its pride of place in the development strides towards our alma mater. We have come a long way and we must move forward. Earlier, while welcoming participants at the event that featured award presentation to deserving members, the Oka branch chairman of the University of Nigeria Alumni Association, Dr. Chinedu Mbalsi, called on products of various universities to begin to make invaluable contributions to their alma mater through alumni associations. My choice is very apt because we know the importance of education to national development and nation building. And so when we saw the way the educational system is going, I sort of talking about politics and politics every day, I said, if we have the right education, I think things will be properly done in Nigeria. So I felt that like, since the government is always complaining that they, they have no funds, looking around globally what is happening in other um, schools and universities in the, in the world, we came with us that their alumni associations are basically the ones that are actually helping them. And I said, if Nigerian universities can key into this system where the alumni association can make contributions to their, to their um, schools in terms of infrastructure development, that it wouldn't take long before some of these schools will have what they need and depend less on the government. And by that way, over time, these incident strike actions could no longer be there. And so A member of the association and former Anambra state lawmaker, Sajo Dimobi, said products from the university will continue to contribute in restoring the dignity of man. Anambra State Commissioner for Power and Water Resources, Engineer Julius Chukwemeka, says provision of social amenities and developmental projects is top priority for the present administration. Engineer Chukwemeka stated this at the Otuacha Regional Water Scheme, Anambra East Council Area, during a third of the facility. Correspondent Blessin Uchendo has the details. The water facility, which is a partnership between Anambra State Government and the European Union, is sourced from the Omambara River and we serve three communities, including Agleri, Umweri, Umobanam. Speaking shortly after the inspection, Engineer Chukwemeka said the visit was to see things for himself and identify areas of intervention as the present government has designed a comprehensive water master plan to ensure that Ndi Anambra have a portable water. He called on traditional rulers, president general, and other community leaders to help to secure and maintain leading pipes that pass water to the fetching points. Before we go into doing new uh, water schemes, uh, first of all, we need to start by rehabilitating the existing water schemes and then ensure that all of them are functional. You know, um, check the best management uh, style that will suit each of the schemes. The charge is that they have to take it as their own. They have to own it. You know, the government is doing it, uh, you know, for them. And the government cannot finish this massive project only for them to come and start vandalizing it, only for people to come and start encroaching into the lands that were meant to be for this plant. You know, so they will take it as their own. Taking the commission around the facility, the acting director, Water Resources Department of the Ministry, Mr. Victor Ezefo, explained that the water, after being treated, goes to the overhead tank situated at Father Joseph Catholic Church at Glory, from where it reticulates to different points. He disclosed that with the water project, people of the area will no longer lack portable water. You see, the Otuacha Regional Water Scheme is so designed to serve the Otuacha 
part of Anambra is. is to see how to sustain this so that it can be very effective and efficient. From Otocha, Anambra East Council Area, Blessing Uchendo, ABS News. The Ministry of Youth Development has organized a digital capacity training for its staff in order to ensure maximum output while also helping to make sure that the activities of the ministry are coordinated. Correspondent Kenechi Kuchukuri tells us more. The 10 days digital training program for staff within the 21 local government area is in collaboration with Percent Technologies Limited is geared towards ensuring that staff get acquainted to computer operations while also being able to use some softwares effectively amongst others. Speaking during the training flag off, the Commissioner for Youth Development, Mr. Patrick Mba, remarked that the training is to positively prepare staff to to key into Governor Chukuma Soludo's plan of digitalization to ensure that Anambra becomes a livable homeland for Ndi Anambra. The program will expose the staff, youth desk officers, heads of departments, and principal officers to serve vast knowledge and advantages of ICT application in daily work and duties of government. However, as one of the policy strategy, community-based driven, in handling youth development programs, therefore, huge responsibilities will now be placed on the shoulder of our local government desk officers. The head of administration at the ministry, Mr. Ifanyi Walosi, noted that it's been long such a training is organized for staff and it will definitely help the desk officers at the local government to better do their work. While the acting director, youth department at the ministry, Mrs. Chito Usili, said that the training is a wonderful opportunity for staff to upgrade their knowledge, advising staff to make good use of the knowledge garnered. Those people we are training now are youth officers located in various local government. That is 21 local government. They are going to be the DEX officers that will guide the youth from those local government in helping in making sure that everything going on there are in the digitalized form. The principal consultant of Percent Technologies and the program trainer, Dr. Ike Chuku Ume, explained that the training will arm staff with how to use office digital applications on computers, documentations, including learning basics of graphics, as discipline will be the watchword for all during the training. The world has gone digital and everybody must digitize. And all of us know that this government is a digital government because everything has become digital since the, governor, the new governor uh, emerged. And that is why Percent Technologies, as a company, decided that we, we, are, we have that um, zeal to partner with government so that government institutions and uh, government uh, workers will be able to meet up the standard of what the governor is planning. Some participants who spoke during the training, Chibuzo Ude and Mrs. Obinwa Chika, said the training is timely and will definitely help add value to their work. In Oka, it's been Kenechuku Chokodi for ABS News. Local Airlines has notified the federal government and the public of a plan to shut down all scheduled services indefinitely effective next Monday, May 9, over unbearable cost of aviation fuel. The current lease sells at 700 naira per litre. The airlines, under the agents of airline operators of Nigeria, AON, in a memo yesterday, regretted consequences of the inevitable shutdown on travelers. They have already booked to travel. In a similar vein, Aviation Workers Union have also notified the government of a two-day warning strike in protest against unreserved conditions of service and outstanding welfare concerns starting from Monday, May 9. President of the AON, Abdul Munaf Yunusir, in a memo endorsed by nine other airline chiefs, noted that government's earlier intervention on the aviation fuel crisis had failed to forestall imminent shutdown, with Jet A1 scaling the 500 naira litre benchmark to 700 naira. 
Mr. Yunus noted that no airline could survive with the astronomical increase in aviation fuel and high cost operations, yet continued to offer subsidized airfares to the traveling public. The federal government has announced the latest growth in Nigeria's oil and gas reserve, stating that the country's hydrocarbons had continued to increase. Figures released in Abuja on Friday by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, a federal government agency, showed that the country's oil reserves increased by 0 0.136 billion barrels to 37.046 billion barrels as of January 31, 2022. Nigeria's gas reserves also grew by 2.9 trillion cubic feet to 208.62 TCF as of January 31, 2022, based on data released by the NUPRC. Announced the country announced the growth in the country's reserves in Abuja. The chief executive of NUPRC, Benga Kumo Lafe, said the announcement was in line with the provisions of Section 7, Subsection I, Subsection J, Subsection K, and Subsection R of the Petroleum Industry Act 2021. He said, as stipulated, that all operating exploration and production companies were to submit their annual report of reserves to the Commission. The UN Security Council has released its first statement on Russia's February invasion of Ukraine, supporting Secretary General Antonio Guterres' efforts to find a peaceful solution to the crisis, but avoiding the use of the words war, invasion, or conflicts. Security Council statements are agreed upon by consensus. The brief test adopted on Friday was drafted by Norway and Mexico. The Security Council expresses deep concern regarding the maintenance of peace and security of Ukraine, it said. The Security Council recalls that all member states have undertaken under the Charter of the United Nations the obligation to settle their international disputes by peaceful means. Guterres, who met Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky last week, welcomed the Council's support on Friday, saying he will spare no efforts to save lives, reduce suffering and find a part of peace. The declaration is the foreshore of unity from the Security Council since Russia invaded on February 24 in what it has called a special military operation. The Nigeria Tennis Federation, NCF, has promised to trailing the second edition of the Navnoch National Open Championship to be held between May 5 and 14 at Package B National Tennis Center at the Moshe Abiola National Stadium. The Federation's president, Dayo Akindoju, stated that this second edition will experience improved quality of play and organizational standard in line with global best practices. He affirmed there will be gender parity in distributing prizes amongst winners in the various categories of the training. He further recommended a sponsor, Staff Notch Nigeria Limited, for initiating and sustaining the sponsorship, which will enhance growth development of the sport, and by extension, using sports generally as a tool for uplifting the socio-economic standard of the society. It was a moment of deep reflection and mourning during the burial of late Mrs. Caroline Iwebuna, popularly known as Mamenugu, as she was described by most who knew her as a dedicated and devout Christian. Correspondent Kenechi Kuchukuri tells us more. Late Mrs. Caroline, who was based in Enugu with all her seven children, hence the nickname Mama Enugu, was a woman who was said to assume love and practical Christian life as a devoted Anglican. Speaking during the burial service held at St. Nicholas Anglican Church, Achala, Reverend Canon Gilbert Wankwo emphasized that Christians must learn to live together in love, accommodate one another without rancor, and put Christ at the center of their existence. Yes, career, Ibu, 
Speaking after the interment of the deceased, his first son, Mr. Chika Iwebuna, said his late mother was a family woman to the core who always advised him positively which her presence and wise counsels will be missed. Her daughter, Kate I.G. Okeke, a former director of programs of ABS, remarked that her mom lived a simple life and tried to have good relationship with those around her and also held tenaciously to her Christian faith and also raised her children in God's teachings. Another of her daughter, Mrs. Obegeli Iwebuna, and a relation, Mr. Chinedu Onukube, explained that the deceased laid for them a good foundation as she was humble and an advocate of peace. My mother is so kind. She a humble woman. She relates with everybody. Even when people, people are, are, are against her, she tried to, in fact, each time she's trying to bring everyone together, even her relations. And that is why you can see many of them around. So I came abroad just to For me to have left Ireland, you know, after you know, that, I was to you know, tells you how important you know, she was to me. I felt really frustrated when I heard about her death. And then I was looking forward to you know, see her next time. This what we are having today. I mean, from the people we have seen here today, I mean, can give the testimony. Mourners who came to condole with the family, Mrs. Chito Usili and Prince Emeka Kalo, noted that late Mrs. Caroline lived a good life, which is a testimony her children bore and urged her children and family to keep her legacies alive. The ABS Director of Administration, Lady Tina Ekenta, and the Director of Programs, Mrs. Neka Ekunife, were also among those who came to condole with the family. Late Mrs. Caroline died at the age of 88 years. From Atala, it's been Kenetuku Chukodi for ABS News. Remember, you can follow news and program on ABS in many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television or car follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website www.absradiotv.com. And to the, end the breakfast news this morning, a quick recap of the main points. State government has commenced move to make on each a green and progressive city. Stakeholders have called for collaboration to tackle challenges facing education sector. Local airlines to shut down operations over aviation fuel. UN Security Council has called for a peaceful solution on Ukraine invasion. Here is the special message again. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround and maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core evil values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. That is it on the breakfast news this morning right here on ABS television. Thanks for watching. My name is Priska Wonko. Good morning and have a happy Sunday.